to sort of like uh, yellow fever is a cultural phenomenon that has kind of bothered me my whole life. And at first I was writing a screenplay about it. Um, and then I started doing more research and interviewing all these different men who actually have um, Asian fetish, a men that I met on Craigslist and other online websites were geared for meeting Asian women. And when I started talking to them, and they were really frank and candid on camera, I realized that there was this kind of amazing documentary there. And that's actually how the story came about. But it's an interesting topic because it's, within the Asian American community, it's a real hot button topic and it pushes people's buttons. People get really upset about it. Outside of the Asian American community, it's the complete opposite sometimes, where they don't know why you're so upset about it, and they're almost offended, like you said. It can be kind of offensive if you're, if you're um, a Westerner, or you know, Western, Caucasian, African American, who just um, has feels- Has a preference. Has a preference, right? Yeah. That's what's hard about the topic, is that there's not a universal reaction to it, which actually makes it a really interesting yeah. topic for a film, because there's, a dialogue that needs to happen that hasn't happened, obviously, because people don't see it from the same angle. But in terms of the fetish thing, it's really interesting. I spoke to um, a Far Eastern specialist and journalist named, um, her name is Sheridan Prasso, and she wrote this book called The Asian Mystique. And she told me that in her research, while she was making this, writing this book, and she traveled all over Asia, she looked online and she counted the number of times um, she counted all the fetishes that are out there that you see online, and she discovered that Asian women are fetishized more than any other fetish out there. Wow. So like shoe fetish, leather fetish, red hair fetish. So I mean, you're asking like, what's the difference? Yeah. There kind of is like, and he's laughing over there because he knows it's true. Um, there is a difference between. Um, right, right. So where, where, where does that come from then? I mean, you, you did all the research on it. So I mean, it must have changed your whole idea and perspectives and everything doing all too, so. Yeah, that's what kind of you don't realize that you go into it having some really preconceived ideas yourself. In the heterosexual community, yeah. um, when it's the other way around, I think people welcome it. <laughs> they think it's fantastic for some it's reason, so right? Am I right? And um, but in the I think in the gay community, there's a lot of terms for it, like rice queen yeah. and like all that kind of stuff. So I think it just I guess it has to do with gender roles a little bit to some degree. And there's this perceived notion that, you know, it's this, you know, Western man who's exploiting this sort of powerless, victimized Asian or Asian American woman. But we're not really. I mean, like, we're not powerless and um, without, you know.